I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to walk you through how to hook up your PlayStation, either PS4 or PS5 controller, to your Windows PC. I'm going to be illustrating it with a PS5 controller. They both work basically the same way. And all the steps that go into the basic setup and getting it running. So the first thing you need to do before we even talk about downloading DS4 Windows is you need to install the Microsoft.NET framework. All it is is a basic framework that DS4 Windows is built on top of. It's provided for free from Microsoft. Just type in .NET, download, and then you should find the .NET website. And you just go to download, and this should work with any version 5.0 or newer. The latest version is 6.0. For most people, it should work just fine. So once you see this, we're gonna go and download the runtime, and we want the run desktop apps. We'll hit download x64, because we want the 64-bit version. I'll just download that to my DS4 Windows folder that I've set up already. And then while that's downloading, we will also download DS4 Windows. Just when .NET Framework is done downloading, just install it. And then the next thing we want to do is Google DS4 Windows. And then what you want is not this first result, because this is unrelated to the developer of DS4 Windows. You want to go down to the one that says Ryo Chan 7. This gentleman is the person that does the updates and the current development for DS4 Windows. And then you want to download the 64-bit version. In this case, you can grab either the 7-zip or the regular zip folder. I'll just grab the 7-zip. And I will download that to the same folder. Both of these should be relatively small. So then I'll go ahead and open that folder. And here are the two files that we are going to be using today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the folder up here for DS4 Windows to a folder of the same name. That way, in case whenever you're using a zip file, whenever possible, put it in its own named folder. That way you don't just like spill out the contents of it in like, say, your desktop and then have to put it all back in a folder and clean up a mess. Then that should be enough time for your .NET framework to be done downloading. I'm going to go ahead and install the updated version because I have an old version running on my computer. So this should only take a moment. It's pretty common to install .NET framework for a number of different softwares, both open source ones like DS4 Windows and some other enterprise software also uses it as a prerequisite. It's just a lot of other software packages it with the original software. And that should be done pretty quickly. Once it's done, just close that, and you should be able to open up this DS4 Windows folder, and inside of it should be like a blue and red, almost like a frosty uh, or a, an icy pop logo. That's the one that you want, the colorful one. We'll double click it, and that should ask you where you want to install this software. Now, some people have been reporting that they're getting an error where DS4 Windows is not detecting that they have the .NET framework installed. To fix this, there's a couple different things that you can do. You can either backdate it to the original 5.0.0 version of .NET framework, and that has been working for a lot of people. You can also run the, the dev version, the SDK, and that also seems to be working for some people, along with just reinstalling the version that you just installed. Sometimes it takes it a second to kick in and be detected. If it's working and running just fine, you should see this little prompt pop up that asks you where you want DS4 Windows to save all of its settings. I always tell it to put it in the program folder because that seems to prevent most of the weird errors that come with DS4 Windows. It also makes it convenient if you ever have to delete DS4 Windows that you can just delete the folder and then you don't have to worry about deleting any supporting files that found their way into your app data folder. So the next thing you need to do once DS4 Windows is open is you should see a special little step-by-step -step guide pop up that instructs you on how to install the remaining drivers for the software. I've already done this a half a dozen times, so it doesn't pop up for me necessarily. You can find it in the settings tab under controller slash driver setup. It's a button. And that should open up this little pop-up window that runs you through installing the Vigimbus driver, 
which just interfaces with USB controllers of any variety, both for PS4 controllers, PS5, Nintendo controllers, and more. It's used by basically all the software that's like DS4 Windows. Install that. And then if you're running an older version of Windows, like Windows 7 or, or older, you'll have to install the Xbox 360 drivers. If you're running 8 or Windows 10, they are included in the operating system, so you don't have to mess with that. You can also play around with these additional optional drivers like the hid hide and the faker input. I don't because they're optional and not really useful or necessary for everybody. So once you've got Vision Bus installed and you don't necessarily need to install these drivers, just click finish to close that window. And then here on the front page, you should, once you plug in your controller and hit the start button, you should see it pop up right here on your screen. As long as you see the, the controller listed, in this case it's my PS5 DualSense controller, you should be good to go and you can start playing games. Do note that this is going to register on your system now as an Xbox 360 controller or just an Xbox controller in general. You're going to see Xbox buttons when you play games. You're going to say to yourself, but Larry, I want to see the PS buttons because that's what I'm using. And unfortunately, we don't have that option. If there was the ability to display PlayStation buttons in your game while using this software, that would mean the game already supports a PlayStation controller and you wouldn't need this driver in the first place. So it sucks, but that's what we're at. we've got and that's where we're at. So this should be ready to go. It's already key bound to do a basic Xbox controller setup. If you find that you want to tweak some of the buttons, you can hit this edit button. This allows you to edit the default key binding profile on the controller by just clicking one of these buttons and then it'll bring up another prompt and say, what button do you want to bind this to either on an Xbox controller or on a keyboard and mouse? So it's actually relatively easy just to mouse over stuff, click it and then rebind it to whatever you want on the system and then hit save. I'm just going to leave the default profile alone because it works pretty well for 90% of people and just you can go play. Do note that along with this always reading as an Xbox controller and you want it to, otherwise this won't work, you also need to leave DS4 Windows open or else it won't be able to function as a driver while you're playing a game. Although when you minimize it, it'll automatically minimize to the system tray hidden, so you'll have to go down there in order to close it properly. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. This has been the basics of how to set up DS4 Windows for your PlayStation controllers. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, throw those into the comment section below. I am happy to help when I can, although most of what I know is already in this tutorial already, or is provided with a different tutorial somewhere else on the channel, like how to reduce input lag or how to fix the whole .NET not detecting problem. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Bye, and have a good one.